What's up guys, Ken from E39 Source here with the 01525 and yes, we're finally working on my car. Just to clarify, we're doing brake pads and rotors on the front axle of a BMW E39 5 Series. That's your 96 through 2003, 525, 530, 528, 535 if you're in Europe, 540 and M5. Uh, of course, the parts will differ between the cars, but the idea is the same. Now, what we're going to walk you through today is how to replace the rotors and the brake pads on your car. I'm using the OEM rotors and the Hawk HPS um, brake pads. These are recommended for the car. They're great because they're low dust, and to be honest, that's the only reason I really want them, because I am really, really sick of cleaning those wheels. Anyway, the tools you're going to need, uh, if you have style fives like mine, uh, you're going to need this tool. This is how you get this uh, hubcap off right here. It clips on, spin it off. Uh, you're going to need a seven millimeter tubular, uh, a 17 millimeter, um, you're gonna need this to break all of the uh, nuts off the wheel. You're also going to need an 18 millimeter bit as well and then of course your usual array of I mean, breaker bar that's pretty standard torque wrench anything seat clamps and a bungee cord which is not here at the moment but those are the tools you're going to need to get started first thing you're going to want to do if you have style files like mine is take this tool here and break off this uh, uh, hubcap this is pretty easy if i can get it to stay on there we go but you just basically twist it uh, counterclockwise and that of course will reveal the, uh, the lug nuts. So what you're going to do then of course is uh, just take them all off counterclockwise of course um, and then I recommend setting them all in here um, just so they're all in one place and then uh, once you've broken them loose anyway don't take them off I take that back once you've broken them loose then you can go ahead and jack the car up put it on jack stands and, and take them out by hand and then you set them in here. All right, guys, so now that you have the wheel off and out of the way and everything, this is your whole brake assembly here. Obviously, here is the rotor and your caliper, of course, the suspension stuff. Now, we're not Colts, so we're not going to deal with any of this. All we're concerned about is the stuff here. So this is, a, this is the same beginning procedure for both brake pads and to replace the rotor. So what you're going to do is you're going to remove this retaining clip that runs all along down here. So you're going to take a flathead screwdriver, preferably a big one, and you're going to press in here. And then you're kind of going to work it out. It's Now remember, it's spring-loaded, so as you're pulling back, it's going to want to pop out. So don't get too close to it so it doesn't pop into your eyes or anything. And then, see, that's getting it's getting very close up here. So almost there. There it is. And it just pops out like that. Okay, guys, so again, looking at the whole assembly here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove the dust covers. Oh, let me focus so fast there. You're going to want to remove the dust covers um, for your... Uh, retaining bolts here. So what you're going to do is just pop this cover off. There's one of these on the top and then there's another one on the bottom. If you follow it straight down you'll feel it uh, in the back here. I know it's very difficult to see because um, it's, obviously it's kind of cramped uh, in here but it's it's directly down here um, and you just pop that cap off as well. This is the part where you're going to need your seven millimeter tubular uh, to remove the caliper guide bolt. So obviously just you're going to just put it in and you're going to drive it out when you get those out uh, then you move on to the next step with the caliper guide bolts out um, depending on how how worn your rotor is you can kind of assess that by feeling the actual surface material here if you have a big lip here on the outside that means you're worn down on my m5 I actually don't feel anything those are newer rotors these are probably several years old so there's a lip and that lip makes it difficult to get the pads here past the rotor so you're going to need to use a screwdriver push the inside pad in towards the piston and the caliper and then uh, wiggle this out. Uh, it's not exactly that quick, but once you get it, you'll see that a lot of times your outer pad stays in the caliper carrier assembly there. We're going to take that out, put it aside. The other pad is stuck into the piston. We're just going to pull it like that. Or you may actually want to leave it in to use a C-clamp to compress your pistons, which we'll be talking about in a minute. On the front driver's side, of the E39 you're going to find a brake pad wear sensor. You only need to replace that if the light inside the car has come on that says check brake linings, I think is what it says, or check brake pads. Uh, otherwise, if you're just doing this for maintenance or you're changing your pad type, you don't need to change that. Um, 
You should know though that one end plugs in here, it just kind of slides in. You'll see it's really intuitive. Um, there's a little nipple here over a uh, metal piece on the caliper that's going to slide off. I'm not going to take it off since we're not replacing these. And then over here, it is this one here that then goes into this little trap door. You slide the trap door open, pull your wiring out, and this is the piece you replace. You need to buy this separately. There's only one on the front driver's side, not the passenger side. So disconnect it here, feed it in, get uh, wires under the strut mount on the uh, back behind the rotor here, and then plugs into your caliper. In order to replace rotors, we need to move the caliper retainer bracket, which is right here. You're going to find it is a 18 millimeter socket. There's two bolts on the back that simply attach it to the rest of the assembly here. So get that on there, break those bolts free, and then this entire thing slides off. Then the only thing left to remove the rotor is to take off this six millimeter Allen screw here, beat it from the back a little bit with a hammer, and it should come right out. All right, using a uh, 3 8 drive, ratchet here and some small adapters and eventually getting to a six millimeter uh, hex bit there at the end. Uh, we took out our Allen key here that holds the, um, the rotor onto the wheel here. Now, words of advice. <laughs> We're on the driver's side. We've already done the passenger side. Hit this thing as soon as you get your wheel off with something. WD-40 PB blaster, some penetrating oil. Lots, Let it sit. Lots, lots, lots of penetrating oil. Be careful, use the right tools, go straight on. You're gonna to have to have one guy hold the rotor straight and the other guy torque at this thing for a while. We spent the last two hours drilling the other side out. It's been a horrible experience, so don't do it. Once you get that out, you may have to beat the rotor a little bit with the hammer from the back. In our case, looks like it's just gonna slide off. We'll see how cooked this thing is. We're probably gonna to wanna to clean up these surfaces here a little bit, maybe with some oil, maybe with a brush. Do that right, take care of your car, and uh, you're good to go. This is our new rotor up in place. Got to use the existing screw here that uh, we had good luck backing out. Um, I think the penetrating oil, about a maybe half hour ahead of time, did a lot of good for us. So we put that in, tightened it up, the rotor's good, clean the mating surface, all of that good stuff. Uh, now we're ready to put the caliper retainer bracket back on, which unsurprisingly goes on the way that it came off which is a little something like this. We get to play with it for a minute here. Slide that on, you'll see the bolts in the back, those 18 millimeters, slide those back in, and uh, then we're gonna get to putting our caliper back on. All right guys, so the next step you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to open uh, the reservoir for your brake fluid. And uh, Ryan learned this the hard way a long time ago, but this is something you really want to make sure is done properly. It's an important step. Since we're going to compress the, the pistons, uh, we, we need to allow the fluid level to rise. Yes. So here's a, so your uh, the reservoir is located under the right cabin air or the driver's side cabin air filter. So what you want to do first, you want to take this rubber stripping up here and kind of just set this on the engine. If it's not hot, you want to melt that. That'd be bad news. Uh, and you want to open up your cabin air filter box. Take your engine air filter out. out. Yeah, that's not supposed to be a nice. Yeah. We need to replace those. Anyway, um, then you're going to want to undo these three clips here. Be careful, don't break anything. And then you're going to want to undo this wire here. Hood sensor. Yes. Then you're going to want to pinch this metal clip here. Just is it pinch and pull, and then this whole thing kind of lifts out. Now is a good time to clean that if you want. Yes, it's very dirty, so... But we've light. gained access to uh, the brake booster in here along with some spider webs. So we're just going to go ahead and loosen the cap on here. If you haven't had your fluid bled for a few years, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. Um, but in this case, we're just going to loosen that up. You can go ahead and drop it back down in there. Don't want any contaminants in there. Um, now we'll move on to compressing the pistons. We'll show you how that's done. With the caliper here and the pad still in the caliper, uh, we've got a C-clamp here. This is probably about a six inch. We're gonna start compressing that pad and thus the piston back into the caliper. Um, we're making room for the new brake pad material. You know, as you use your brakes, you wear down the brake pads, the piston expands to, to keep the contact close and over time you wear down material. So now we're replacing them. We're taking those years of years and miles of wear off and we need to push that piston back into its furthest position. So we use a C-clamp for that. It's best to leave the pad in there. 
And then once it's compressed, take the pad out. See, that's the one that goes inside of the piston. Then we'll take our new pads, slide them in there, put this one in here, put it back over the rotor. Seven millimeter tubular bolts go back in, the plastic dust covers, and we're done. Okay, everything's put back together. We compressed the piston, got the, uh, the pads in there. We actually destroyed the old brake pad wire sensor, so good thing I had one on hand uh, from the M5. So we threw that in there, wired that all up. It's really easy, just wires under there and then behind the trap door, as I said before. Get the pads in there, push this back in, your two seven millimeter tubular bolts, tighten those down, put the dust covers on them. This thing, you're going to have to play with the uh, retainer clip there for a few minutes to get it to snap back in while holding tension. What that does is it just keeps um, tension on the caliper in towards the center of the wheel using the retainer bolt as resistance, or the retainer caliper retainer bracket as resistance. So everything's nice and tight. We're going to throw the wheel back on, put in our five lugs at 79 foot-pounds or 89 foot-pounds, one of those two specs, doesn't really matter. And we're going to be done with this wheel. Now, wrapping this up in post so we can get this uploaded, uh, we just finished the front driver's wheel on Kenan's 525i. Um, rotors installed, we screwed that six millimeter Allen back in, got the caliper uh, carrier uh, assembly back together, put caliper in. Now it's just a matter of putting on your wheel. If you have the other side yet to do, it's the exact same process. Uh, and, and the back as well is the same process. Um, smaller parts, but it's all the same idea. Once you know the steps to take, it is that easy. Same with the M5, as I mentioned before. Only thing to note about the back being different from the front is the fact that you do not want your parking brake engaged if you're going to replace your rotors. If you're doing the pads, it doesn't matter. Thing is with your parking brake is it works on the inside of the rotor here. Looking at an M5, they're the same as, as the, the rest of the E39s. Um, and it, it will apply pressure to the actual rotor so you won't be able to get it off. You'll likely damage your parking brake. So just make sure that's turned off and the rotor will come, rotor will come off just like it did from the front. So that's going to finish up this video for brake pads and rotors. If you have any questions, send us an email, leave a comment, ryan at e39source.com would be the email for that. Let us know how it goes. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We'll talk to you in a future video. Bye-bye.